It's Monday, and you know what that means. It's Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I mock it. I actually just give my opinions and perspective on it. I think it's fun to look at other people's mock drafts, especially this early, and just see what a what kind of prospects they're taking a look at, uh, and just getting their opinions. And today, we got a doozy. We got Cam Miller from the Pro Football Network. I actually follow this cat on Twitter. Let's go ahead and switch over. But I follow him on Twitter. He's an interesting follow. He's kind of like a Chris uh, Sims in a way with some of his takes. But like I said, man, we're here to, you know, just look at someone else's perspective, get their opinions, and do a little jest in here and there because it's fun that way. But uh, this is a two-rounder, I believe. So, yeah, man, get ready. Strap in. But anyway, what's crack a It's your boy, Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up up if you appreciate the content and as always let me know what you think of this mock draft in the comment section below and look at that you already know this is going to be the thumbnail it's actually a pretty good looking thumbnail too but interesting guys i got here with brock purdy guy that i once loved and then 2020 happened and then uh jalen tolbert uh the wide receiver out of south alabama uh surprised he didn't come out last season but he is an interesting name to watch out for so let's go ahead Get this sucker started with the first pick. He used Vegas betting odds, yes, to determine the order. And as you say, if you want to be mad, be mad at Vegas. That's right, be mad at the Raiders. So first pick, he's got Sam Howe. Well, with the Texans taking Sam Howe over Spencer Rattler, which is a lot of people's number ones. And I'm not going to lie, man. I'm starting to buy into a little bit of the Sam Howe hype because the dude's arm is is a cannon he is, he is deadly accurate with it so right now this does seem like the two horse race for well i guess first quarterback off the board but let's be honest with how valuable the quarterback position is probably first overall pick uh with texans you kind of already know their story deshaun watson it's kind of up there what's going to go on with that and i mean davis mills let's be honest he's a third round pick but let's go ahead to number two. Presuming this is Detroit, they go Spencer Rattler. So it's nice to see that uh, our boy Cam here is kind of on the same page. With These are kind of the consensus top two quarterbacks in the class right now. Granted, long season. Things can change. It's all preseason. All right. But uh, Detroit, yeah, they get their quarterback of the future. Jared Goff probably ain't that. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and keep this sucker rolling. With pick three, will things get interesting? Not yet. He's got the Jaguars going with Kayvon Thibodeau. Uh, probably the one of the, for some people, the top prospect in this class. So if you're not taking into account positional value, because we know quarterback position, it's the most valuable position. But Thibodeau, extraordinary athlete. Very good. Going to the Jags, they could use some help at pass rush. It'll be interesting to see what Cave, uh, Clavon, Clavon Chase on, how he improves this year. And, then of course, Josh Allen, I believe, is a free agent. I th think, no, he's a free agent, not this season, but I think next season. So, yeah, and, I mean, the other only the only other guys you could probably go here, what, maybe Kyle Hamilton, Derek Stanley, more likely. But even then, they invested so much in the secondary the, um, this pass off season, it's hard to believe they would go there. The Jets go Kair Elam. This is very interesting because a lot of people have Derek Stanley. Elam, he's he's close, man. He's right up there. Um, the guy is, I would say he's kind of on par with C.J. Henderson. It'll be interesting to see where, and we know he was top 10 pick so I don't, i'm not going to dispute elam as a top 10 pick um i'm a big fan of his as well so it, it's going to be stupid interesting i think it's, it's yeah the jets of course they need to go corner they got bryce hall which they don't really know what they have in him just yet and then what um austin bleason or whatever um former draft pick out of what i think Rutgers. so yeah they need to invest in that position especially if thibodeau and Aaron on the board but i'm surprised i imagine stanley will go pretty soon and then they're actually Cincinnati Bengals are they pick Stanley with the next pick. Not gonna dispute it. Bengals, they need help. They really don't have a true number one corner there. Stanley would be a good addition. Let's keep it rolling. The Eagles, they go safety with Kyle Hamilton. Um, I I uh, this is tough, man. Like, if you're the Eagles, where can you really go? I I'd be willing to take a shot at Malik Willis. He's probably a lot of people's like third or fourth quarterback in this class. Because uh, the pure upside of this guy and his just arm. So, 
And if this is the Eagles, this is probably the Eagles pick. I you're ta- you're taking a quarterback. Jalen Hurts, it didn't work out. Go ahead, find a franchise guy, and hopefully it is it would be a guy like Willis. So um Hamilton's fine though. Hamilton's real good. So let's go ahead. They got the New York Giants going. This is our first tackle off the board. Kenyon Green. I'm a big fan of Kenyon Green. He's moving to left tackle this season. Uh, and I think he should work out there. He's mainly played left guard throughout his career. But he's athletic enough to stick out on the outside, and we'll see how that goes in the SEC. Uh, good case to be made. He could be the top um, top guy. But I think Evan Neal is going to be it for a lot of people. Uh, just very good, very good athlete for a man his size. And then, I mean, you can make a case for quarterback as well for the Giants this early. This is their pick. Obviously, Daniel Jones wasn't that good if this is their pick. So... Atlanta Falcons, they go George Karloftis. George Karloftis. There we go. Uh, Out of Purdue, I really think if he kind of comes back healthy this season, because he was beat up last year, but didn't really show the same. Like His production was insane his freshman season in 2019. If he comes out and replicates that, I think, yeah, you you could be talking about this guy in the first round. He's not there for me. Uh, just yet. I think he's like kind of fringe first, if not late first right now. Um, I'm kind of going through, um, reordering my rankings right now and I only have like three or four position groups done. So, and I've yet to get it to edge. So it, it could change, but, uh, Falcons grabbing it. They do need edge help. Let's be honest. Dante Fowler. He, he ain't it. He's a good, he's a good complimentary pass rusher. And then we got the Carolina Panthers going Evan Neal. Yeah, they need tackle help, man. They're starting what Cam Irvin. So this pick totally makes sense. Uh, I mean, they got Greg Little there too, but finding someone to play on the left side, which this is be interesting. I think Evan Neal is supposed to move to the left side. So we'll see how that works out this year for him. All right. Uh, next pick. Okay, so that might not have been the Giants pick because they're picking here again. This could be the Bears pick. Um, But, yeah, Drake Jackson. If Drake Jackson could show that that he can consistently play at that high-end level that we've seen in spurts, totally. I think he was my edge two um, at the beginning of the summer. Uh, Might shuffle things up. Again, I'm revisiting all these rankings again, but... Yeah, the, dude, pairing him up with Aziz Ojolari, that's scary. And Drake Jackson, he can like he can slip to the uh, D line if they want him to. So defensive interior specifically. And let's keep this train of moving. Denver Broncos go Brock Purdy. What the flip? Brock Purdy being his QB three right now. Brock Purdy had a really bad start to the 2020 season. Started with that bad, what they lost to, was it Louisiana Monroe, right? It was terrible. It was bad. He started looking better down the stretch, but uh, again, he's going to have to come out and like play at that sophomore freshman um, type level that he did coming out. And something I actually disagree with Cam here, kind of reading this, that he has elite arm talent. I don't think he has elite arm strength. Like, the dude can be pinpoint accurate, but he's a slinger, but I don't really think he has that that arm strength to really push the ball downfield um, consistently. Sometimes when he tries to do that, it kind of floats in the air. And at college, you won't always be deemed for that. You know, your receivers are getting way more separation. In the NFL, those do turn into picks, so... I wouldn't say Brock Purdy is a first-round talent right now. Um, I do like him as a slinger. Even when I was high on Brock Purdy, I had him as a late first-rounder. So, um, yeah, I kind of disagree. Then the Las Vegas Raiders, they're going Ahmad Gardner. I'm a big fan of Ahmad Gardner. I think he's the best, one of the best press men corners in this class, which is interesting. To s- I don't necessarily think the Ravens – or the Ravens, the Raiders might be moving – more towards that at least with the uh, like in gus bradley's scheme they're more of a cover three and i know a cover three after 10 yards it's basically man defense but still um i'm not in love with the scheme fit but i'm in love with the prospect and i mean the raiders i would get at the i guess at this point i mean i know casey hayward's only there probably on a one-year deal i think um but you're giving up on david arnett which is fine but you're not giving up on trayvon mullen then at that point but still i think it would for him to really fit, I don't, I don't necessarily see the, the, the scheme fit, necessarily. 
but let's keep this going. Arizona Cardinals, Darion Kendrick. I'm actually a big fan of Darion Kendrick. I know the stupid stuff in the offseason. He had the, um, I forgot what he was, what it was. It was like a rest for something. Eventually left Clemson. Um, and he's only been playing the corner position for two seasons. He goes to Georgia. He's going to be facing SEC play. He, he was shut down against the ACC. Now he goes in there to play against the SEC. Like, I think he could legit come back into the second round fold. Um, I'm a big fan of Kendrick. I thought he actually played Jamar Chase better than um, AJ Terrell did in the same game. Uh, but yeah, let's keep this rolling. Washington football team, DJ Daniels. This is wild because we still got Malik Harris on the board, uh, Keaton Slovis. You can make a case for Carson Strong. Those three guys are also on the board. JT Daniels, yes, if he could do an encore of last season totally could be a first rounder um i wasn't terribly in love with that bowl game against cincinnati but yeah washington needs a quarterback totally makes sense if you really think jt daniels is going to come out here like the dude was slinging it downfield man he loved pushing the ball downfield it was just sometimes like um like mainly that cincinnati game it just he was throwing it into coverage man i wasn't a fan but those other three games quite good quite good then we got the Minnesota Vikings going Zach Harris. This is interesting because I'm starting to become a bit higher on Tyreek Smith, his teammate there. I think Smith, he's had the better win rate, the better pressure rate. Um, it's just these guys didn't play a lot of snaps last season. But, I mean, the skill set, the 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 tools are there for Harrison. I really think he, he is probably a first-rounder, um, especially after, uh, once the season ends. I think both these guys could probably sneak into the first round. But Minnesota, yeah, they don't really have someone opposite of um, Hunter. So I know they've invested in some guys in like day two, but uh, come on. DJ Wonham was a day three pick. He felt more developmental at this point. He feels still more as a rotation guy. So, yeah. LA Chargers, they're going to Kim. Um, let's see if I can not butcher this guy's name. Kim uh, Akwanwu uh nc state he's plays left tackle there but in the nfl he's gonna be a guard he's not a great pass protector there on the outside so you can kind of hide that moving in a guard but he's extraordinary athletic uh he's as extraordinary as an athlete at his size and um bruce feldman's talked about this guy as kind of like the guard version of makai becton so there's there's a lot there's a lot of love for uh this cat um interesting chargers go guard though I mean, I guess they don't really have a long-term answer there at guard. So, yeah, I don't mind that, I guess. And then we're going to keep his muck rolling with the New England Patriots going Brees Hall. I hate this pick. Running backs shouldn't go this early unless they're, like, extraordinary talents. Like, this is, like, I wouldn't really consider, like, a Saquon Barkley, who I I felt like has probably been one of the best running back prospects to come out in recent memory. I wouldn't really take him maybe till like somewhere after the top 10. Uh, even top 15, I feel better about just because running back value. It's just, it's been proven analytically. It's been proven that you can get by with these free, these low cost free agents, these guys that you draft that just really are good scheme fits later on day three. Like going back to the Super Bowls, like um recent super bowls leonard fournette they were they were like oh he was a first rounder yeah but tampa picked him up basically free of charge same with Le'Veon bell there for kansas city damon williams who was a starter going back to um the 2019 super bowl um raheem mostert like you don't you just don't need to invest that in running back you'd be like well look at derrick henry yeah he's essentially the exception but how many Super Bowls the Titans been with while Henry was on the roster? And keep in mind, they were not a viable playoff like playoff threat until the change to Ryan Tannehill. Uh, you can you can bring up other examples like CMC. Okay, when were the Panthers in the playoffs? Like you, you can bring up other like you can bring up other examples, but it, I don't think you're gonna really sell me on this. Sorry. Uh, but I do like Brees Hall a lot, man. Brees Hall's 
really working behind a kind of a subpar offensive line there. Like on most of his carries, I think he was typically hit behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, this guy really can break loose, man. He really turns nothing into something. Uh, but the Patriots, they got Damian Harris. I think they're fine with that. They just invested in Raheem Mostert in the fourth round. They still have James White. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Technically, Sony Michelle's still on the roster. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going Carson Strong. This is a lot of people's kind of like pick to be like the Zach Wilson or the uh, Joe Burrow of this class, a guy that could kind of come maybe from nowhere and be a first rounder uh, or maybe be even the first quarterback off the board. I like Strong, dude. Dude's got probably the strongest arm in this class. But uh, he does, I mean, when we get to my QB rankings, you're going to see kind of like some of the, the flaws I see in his game. He's kind of got this Carson Wentz feel in the pocket where he starts to feel pressure before there's even pressure there. And keep in mind, this was something that caused Jacob Eason's uh, draft stock to slide despite him having the great arm talent. So, yeah, I think it's something to monitor this season. Uh, Malik Willis going to the Eagles. Wow, I would have taken him... Um, what was it six overall the eagles had the initial pick so i guess you kind of make right look at how many quarterbacks you got having a, like going in the first round i don't think this is going to be like last year's where we what we saw five and at this point you got willis strong purdy um and then how rattler i think he, wait strong willis daniels purdy so he's got six going i don't know i don't think we're gonna see six um go in the first round but yeah, well, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Next up here, we got the Saints going Chris Olave. I actually like this one a lot. Actually, I scrolled a bit, uh, down a bit too much. Um, but let's talk about Chris Olave first. It, he's a great addition. They really don't have a true burner. Like, they try to make Traquan Smith that. He ain't. It just didn't work out. Chris Olave's great. He, he, the dude does got the Jets. He's a fabulous route runner. Big fan. I like. I I actually like the fit with Saints, especially across from Michael Thomas. Uh, more so this, Demarvin Le uh, Leal not coming off the board until twenty one is a crime. Even he says there's too much value in uh, Demarvin Leal at this point. Yeah, he's not gonna be here. There's not a chance, dude. He's a way better prospect than Derek Brown, who went in the top ten. Way better. This dude's a top ten talent. He's a blue chip prospect. I'm a big fan of Leo. Uh, Leo. It's going to take me a minute to get used to saying that name. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, though, would love for that to happen. And then next, Tennessee Titans go Traylon Burks. This is a bit interesting. This might be looking to the future um, with Julio there because Traylon Burks, he's a, one of those bigger, more physical receivers. Dude's got some pretty darn uh, good speed. He was a primary a vertical threat in his first year of seeing significant time in arkansas and then he was um really used in the slot and in a variety of different ways he became a much better route runner why would i wouldn't say he's got a complete route tree i wouldn't say he's like the best route runner in this class but i think he's very good at that um so i mean a guy that gives you options guy that he can come in and play the slot immediately so i like that i like that i'm a big burks fan and then we have Christian Harris going to the Jets. First linebacker off the board. Christian Harris, man, dude's athletic freak. I just want to see him trust more, trust in himself a bit more, man. Because I think I don't think he's got necessarily processes like he. I don't think he's necessarily a bad processor when it comes to the passing game. I just don't think he necessarily kind of believe in what he saw. Similar to um, who's that? Illinois State safety. Uh, at the senior ball i can't remember off the top of my head but similar with him i thought he had really good movement skills but more times than not when he was late at the senior bowl to get somewhere it was because i don't he was in that, he was very hesitant he was in a very decisive his decision making so i think that's something christian harris needs to see a bit more but overall this dude's a very good athlete um i see why a lot of people like him uh going to the jets though yeah they could use a linebacker and then the Indianapolis Colts, they go Garrett Wilson. They get a really good route runner here. Guy with some after-the-catch ability to really compliment uh, Michael Pittman Jr. there. Uh, T.Y. Hillen, probably, uh, obviously, not. he's on a one-year deal, not a long-term answer. Um, his best days, let's be honest, are behind him. So, 
Yeah, I like that too. Then I got the Miami Dolphins here. Andrew Booth. I kind of like him here at the end of the first round. I think uh, another year of just banger play there in the ACC should be enough to maybe propel him to top 20. But yeah, Andrew Booth's quality, uh, obviously there's a lot of this has to do with Xavier Howard's situation. I don't think, keep in mind, they, they brought in Noah and Big Nogany, and I don't think they brought him in just to be a slot. I really think this guy, ha he has the chops to play on the outside, at least the physical and athletic profile to do that. Uh, so, uh, you know, you kind of know how it is. And then keep this rolling. Ollie Gay. We got a couple of guys here, actually. Uh, Ollie Gay going to the Browns. Like, Ollie Gay looked pretty good in his first year of SEC play. He is a Juco transfer. Uh, I think if we see more of the same, maybe you hear his name, like, brought up there as a first rounder. Um, maybe not, though. I don't know if I'm totally on board with that quite yet but yeah i can i can see why people really like him uh and then the buffalo bills they go corner mikhail right uh i don't know if he's a first rounder just yet but the dude has played in a variety of different uh like coverages there at oregon um again i don't know if he's first rounder i feel better about him on day two but i guess we'll see We'll see. Uh, the Bills, yeah, they really need a competent number two. Levi, Levi Wallace, he's okay, but you could definitely do better. And then the Detroit Lions go Jalen Tolber. We talked about him at the beginning of the video, man. He is hes really good, man. He is really, really good there at South Alabama. The thing is, he just dude doesn't see quality competition. I think him coming back, he really does need a good senior bowl to really emerge from this class like i believe he is a senior because he could have came out last year but i can admit he was a redshirt sophomore um just to be sure oh wow uh no no 2020 the dude was indeed okay he's a he's a redshirt so, uh, redshirt senior actually okay okay that makes a lot more sense so yeah i like to I, I like uh tolbert man and detroit they need some weapons on the outside i really think amon ross st brown's probably a slot guy baltimore ravens go charlie cross i'm not a big fan i'm not a big fan charlie cross i'm not gonna lie to y'all when my tackle rankings come around he's not gonna be a first rounder he's not um, he's got a lot to prove this year. Yes, the tools may be there, but like he has one good game against Alabama and then so much up and down play that it's just very discouraging. I think there's some better tackles in this class currently, or at least that have produced well. Um, and then, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, we got the Green Bay Packers, you know, finally getting Aaron Rodgers help, who might not be on the roster at this point. Uh, and David Bell. He's one of the good pass catching receivers or uh, contested catch receivers in this class, and he's able to create after the catch. That's one of the things I really like about him. He hasn't really ran a this like huge route tree there at uh, Purdue. They mainly like to just get the ball quickly into the hands of their playmaker and let them do all the work. We saw that with Rondale Moore. So, but David Bell, dude's fabulous, man uh going to the tampa bay buccaneers he's got two run backs in the first round might not be wrong though he might not be wrong with isaiah spiller isaiah spiller is more this three down back not really gonna light up the passing game but uh tampa bay they they don't have to do this i think they won't do this they've drafted extremely well and i think they're going to continue just to um strengthen other positions with this with their picks like they go what they took joe tryon um which Let's be honest, he's probably going to be a replacement for JPP at some point. So I, I could see them going maybe, maybe, maybe with an interior guy if one pops up off the board. Um, there's a couple of guys that I think are fringe first rounders for the DT class. Uh, they could go with the offensive line. I mean, I really, I really want like discount anything they could even go corner you can never have too many good corners and then maja sanders going to the chiefs uh yeah after the whole frank clark thing yeah probably and i'm pretty sure i heard that chris jones is kicking to the outside 
Uh, and Sanders, while he doesn't necessarily fit the Spagnola type of bigger athletic guys, he's a bit more leaner. But hey, ain't no, this dude was getting to the passer at a high rate, man. I'm a big fan of his game. There's a lot of very interesting edge talent in this class. Let's go ahead to the next page, second round. I think he has it all on one page for us. So we can kind of roll through these. Houston Texans, Drake London. He's one of my favorite receivers in this class, man. I'm a huge fan, man. I'm going to have him rated really high. I think I already kind of did in my um last receiver rankings. But the dude can do it after the catch. Uh, like I think he's a good enough um route runner i think he's got some speed to him that uh, there are people saying he's a 4-4 guy which i i was blown away by i don't necessarily see that on tape but by no means is he slow but i'm a big fan texans they get a receiver for their new franchise quarterback in who they took sam howe right and the detroit lions go kingsley a nag bear uh this guy literally i love this term of bull in the china shop because it really feels like it is this unstoppable force that's so out of control though and that is kind of his game man he kind of he does play a bit out of control um there are some like he's a toolsy guy like there's some technique stuff that he really needs to work on it's not like he exactly goes in with a plan b let alone a plan a of how to win he just tries to rely on those physical gifts but the, again, upside, upside, upside. Jacksonville Jaguars go uh, Jalen Watermeyer, first tight end. I'm kind of on board with Miller here. With I don't think there's a first round tight end, but Watermeyer, he might be the first one off the board in this class. Dude's got very good receiving upside. The New York Jets go Nick uh, Nick Bonito. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued because uh, I think he is definitely going to need to go to a very scheme specific scheme. While he has played in coverage and he's done a quality job at that, be interested in what Robert Sala would do with something, someone like that. But yeah, he he might be very scheme specific because like the dude ain't gonna be putting on like he ain't he's not gonna be a two fifty. I just can't see it, at least not healthily. And then ooh, Rashid Walker out of Penn State going to Cincinnati. I feel like he's more of a guard. Um, just because the dude, when big games come around, just ask Ohio State, he don't show up, man. He doesn't show up in big games. I get it. There, there's, there's stuff to like about him in terms of his size and, um, his athletic ability, but it's just, man, it, man, it just hasn't shown up, uh, in the big games. Philadelphia Eagles, seven banks. I feel better about him as a second rounder. I get it. Guy could have a big year after having a just dog crap year last year. And he's really going to need a big year if he wants to be considered a first rounder. That's why I really don't get people putting him in the first round. A lot of it's just based on where he plays and um, just how gifted he is in terms. He's, he kind of ticks all the boxes of potential elite receiver. Then the New York Giants go... Travius Hodges Tomlinson. He is an undersized corner. That is what he is. A lot of teams are going to look at him and feel this is, a, this is a slot guy at the next level. I think you'd be wrong to do that, man. The guy is, was shut down last season. Shut down. Uh, it will be interesting to see where he goes, but I'm a big fan. Uh, and the Giants just get richer at corner. Like that's a they're secondary. That they're full of full of talent. And we're going to the Atlanta Falcons, Desmond Ritter. Uh, a lot of people like him. A lot of people think he is a potential first-round prospect. I hard disagree, man. I'm I'm not a, a big fan of his game. Um, I'll get into that when we do the QB rankings. Maybe that comes out next week. I think I want to I want to at least make it visually look better for y'all. But uh Falcons they get a successor to Matt Ryan here in the second round. That's that's fine. Just not a fan of Ritter. Oh, excuse me, man. Thought I was going to burp and I yawned. Weird combination there. Uh New York Giants, New York Jets, excuse me. They get Isaiah Likely. This is interesting cuz he really does feel like more of a jumbo receiver. Um, well, yeah, he's like in, he does inline block. Cause that's a real, like, that's a triple option team. Um, so real 
non NFL type of scheme. But likely the dude after like the catch is phenomenal. It really does feel like a jumbo receiver. Uh, but let's be honest, man. The NFL, they're kind of moving towards um, tight ends that really can make plays. Guys, that they're looking for playmakers in the passing game. And he totally is one. And then we saw Trent McDuffie going to the Bears. I don't think McDuffie lasts this long. He's a first-round talent to me. I think he's one of the best zone corners in this class. Uh, the Bears would be getting a steal if he were here in the second. And then at 43, Zion Nelson, dude. This guy, I, I'm really, I'm really starting to come around to him a lot. I more like more so thought he was a first uh fringe first rounder, but man, just how big in terms of a leap he's made in development since his first start in 2019 has been immense. He really just needs to get up to size. I heard he got up to that 300, 310 range, which to keep this guy used to play tight end in in high school so yeah i'm a big fan big fan las vegas raiders they go tyler davis i'm not particularly in love with what he's done with the raiders here tyler davis has got a lot to prove because from a from a physical standpoint the length ain't great um he's kind of stocky you know i think he's like maybe measuring at six two i think he's closer to six foot but he feels more stout and stocky, and I know he wasn't he wasn't entirely healthy last season, but still he needs a he needs to get back to that freshman type of production before I really consider him. I think a day two guy in general. But yeah, Raiders go interior. I don't know. I I'd be willing to go after playmakers here. Like I know a receiving class ain't great, but I really think there 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 are gonna be some guys here in day two that I'd be willing to take shots at. Um, even maybe if it's improving the offensive line. There's a lot of interior guys still on the board here that I think watch out. Kyron Williams going to the Cardinals. Not a fan of Kyron Williams. I'm not going to be honest. He really feels like maybe a heavier version of Demetric Felton. Except for Felton didn't have the drop or fumble concerns in college. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, especially here in the second round. The Washington football team, they go Zion Johnson. Speaking of which, man, one of these interior guys I'm in love with. I think he's moving back to guard um, after playing left tackle. And honestly, he was playing left tackle very good last season. Um, uh, after moving to tackle in 2019 and not looking so great. But yeah, I actually like him a lot, man. I'm going to be really high on him in my first, uh, first my preseason projections. Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Joseph, he's a first rounder to me, man. I'm a big fan of Brandon Joseph, a guy that can play solid, he can play in the box, he can play deep. I don't expect him necessarily to be the playmaker he was a year ago. I think he had like six, yeah, yeah, six interceptions last season. I don't necessarily expect him to replicate that number, but he he will be an interesting guy to watch out for. And then he's got the Chargers taking an edge rusher in Tyreek Smith. I kind of mentioned him earlier. Uh, I'm a big fan of his game. I think he's kind of this fringe first rounder at this point. He just really hasn't been given the snaps. And then we're going to go to the New England Patriots going Ollie Green. The That's the fourth, right? I'm not going to lie, y'all. I have yet to look at this guy. Uh, I've seen him mentioned on a few sites, but I haven't actually sat down and watched him myself. So I can't give you an honest opinion on him. So I'm just going to assume this is a good pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I look forward to, to actually sitting down and watching them. I think corners are probably going to be one of the last groups I end up doing just because I love the corner position. It's my favorite position to evaluate. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, Josh Job, Job, excuse me. Um, I don't, I don't know, man, because Steelers have really become more of this man heavy coverage defense. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be Job at the next level, man. He's more of a cover two, cover four guy. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, but definitely I think second round's a good, good area for him. I just don't know about the fit. Miami Dolphins, Eric Gray, another running back coming off the board. He's got, some, I'm just going to say this. He's got, he's got some. He likes Eric Gray. I don't think Garrett Gray is the best back on that team. Kennedy Brooks, watch out for that cat. I'm kind of high on him. 
a little bit. A little bit. I like him a lot of it. He opted out of last year. I think he comes out as a banger um, 2020. Because let me tell you, 2018, 2019, his production was ridiculous. It really was. I think he could kind of be at this point because no one's really mocking him um, in the like first three or first three rounds right now. I really think it could be the Javante Williams of this class. Kind of come out of nowhere and make himself, hey, I'm one of the best backs in this class. You better recognize. Uh, Jordan Battle going to the Saints. Good pick. I don't think Jordan Battle goes in the second. The guy's a first round, first rounder. Um, in my in my eyes guy could go top 20 top 25 i really feel really good about the uh top three safeties in the class being hamilton joseph and battle as first rounders i really think those guys are that good and then tyke smith going to dallas uh i think is really good he's one of the best slot corners in college football today and he moves to the sec after being at west virginia and dude if he comes out and it's more of the same yeah, this dude's going to have uh, Elijah Molden hype in uh, for me. They're going to Elijah Molden also fell to the end of the uh, third round. The Atlanta Falcons go Abraham Lucas. Abraham Lucas kind of feels like a day two guy. Um, the dude's, dude's been pretty great. He's one of the best um, pass protectors in this class. He's probably going to have among the most true pass sets of any of these guys in this class and dude's just graded out pretty well he's a bit tall sometimes it gets out leveraged but still a very good prospect demarvi oh, i gotta learn how to say is it demarvian uh overshown i've actually become a big fan i really feel like he's kind of the jok for me in this class i don't think he's by he hasn't really produced like jok did last season um but uh, like he is, I I kind of feel a similar skill set. I'm a big fan. And then speaking of another guy that I feel like kind of similar to JOK is Owen um, Papo. Uh, yeah, he's kind of used in the same regard. He kind of kicks to the slot, stays around the box there for Auburn. Huge fan. Those two guys, I'm really, I'm probably gonna be pretty high on. The San Francisco 49ers go Tyler Linderbaum. Tyler Linderbaum's going in the first round. He's one of my favorite interior prospects I've seen probably since Quentin Nelson. I feel that good about him. A lot of people would be like, oh, man, but he's sub 300. Well, the dude, I think he weighs in pretty soon for Iowa. I think he's going to end up being above 300, even if he's not. If he's close to, I'm cool with. He's the most athletic uh, material player in this class you could maybe even say he's one of the most athletic offensive linemen in this class the guy is extremely good the cleveland browns go justin ross this is about right i think as an early projection for ross just since he's coming off such a serious injury you kind of want to see him play first before you're like he's a first rounder um he does feel like a t higgins clone to me um yeah he really does. And he's actually, he was utilized very similar uh, to T. Higgins. Man, and Clemson, they just love their big vertical receivers. And then uh, the Buffalo Bills go Perrion Winfrey. Uh, the big thing with Winfrey, which is interesting, the Bills looking for some pass rush on that interior, apparently. But Winfrey, it's just, I really do think he ends up in the second round, at least right now, just because he, do he doesn't get used in the run game. They see. Uh, I don't know if it's because o Oklahoma sees him as this, um, as a detriment to the run game. It's just he's not really utilized in that way. And you typically see those guys that aren't very complete on the interior. Much like this was kind of what was thought about with Christian Barmore. They do fall in the second round. They fall to the second round. Los Angeles Rams, Devin Lloyd. I gotta get to these linebackers, but he was one of the more impressive ones that I've seen. Um, bits and pieces on then a lot of people are extremely hype on him so i can't give you a really good analysis right now on him uh, admittedly just because again i haven't watched a ton of him just yet i was kind of holding off on the linebackers um because their linebackers are extremely hard to evaluate at least for today's nfl at least that's what i think and then 61 haskell garrett man i actually like him in this range this guy Oh, man, as a pass rusher, watch out, dude. His pressure rate, I think he was second to Christian Barmore last year in pressure rate. It was either pressure rate or win rate. I can't remember which. Either one, you know, yes, please give me more. Um, you would think 
he would be a liability as a run defender just because he kind of lacks ideal length. But no, the guy is very good at diagnosing what's going on in front of him and adjusting as such. And he's quick enough. He's very good with his hands. Um, and yeah, dude, dude's just very good. Uh, I like this one of the Packers, Sean Ryan. I'm actually a big fan of Sean Ryan's. Uh, and it, honestly, it might just come to one game. I loved how he handled Kayvon Thibodeau. He literally shut down Thibodeau whenever they were matched up like it. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Deslin Alexandra. Um, I haven't checked this guy out, which is weird because uh, I checked out his teammate. Oh, can't remember. It's like Kalijah or something. But his teammates and his teammate, there ain't no way he's coming out in this class because I think he's only going to be a redshirt sophomore this year. But um, can't tell you much about this guy. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. And then for the final pick, John Mechie the second going to Alabama. Or going to Kansas City from Alabama. Uh, a lot of people really like him. I don't think he's a first rounder. I know Alabama, they've produced two first round or yeah, two first round wide receivers in the last two drafts. Um four altogether. I mean two each year. I don't think it happens this year. There's a lot to John Mechie's game. He really needs to improve. He's not like the rest of these guys. He needs to become um he does have the drop issue. A little bit you'd be like well jerry judy had a drop issue jerry judy is also a fantastic route runner one of the best route runners i've seen in years um mechie uh he he's he's a good route runner don't get me wrong he gets good separation too but it's just he gets knocked like if he's facing physical receivers if he's getting pressed up he's having a tough time he literally got shut down by martin emerson he was held to nine yards i think it was like and they weren't even thrown to him because the dude just couldn't get off the line of scrimmage against Martin Emerson. By the way, not even in this mock, but I'm a big Martin em Emerson fan. But that's it for the video. I'm not going to, what, talk your ears off. Hopefully, there were some guys you didn't know in here and you want to now go look up. That's kind of the point of these mock the mocks, man, to kind of maybe see how other guys feel about some of these prospects maybe prospects you haven't even heard of yet and you're like oh let me go check them out because the more eyes you got on some of these prospects the less work you're probably going to have to do during the well off-season process that's how i see it but that's it for the video go ahead and do that youtube thing it's always much appreciated much obliged i can't tell you how much i really do appreciate y'all we're doing um because this is coming out monday i'm actually filming this sunday we're doing another mock fantasy football draft uh and i'm going to try to start putting out some content on tiktok for fantasy football specifically but until next time you be easy my friends later